Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 15th of January 2017. I know last week was rather bleak with all the attacks against Linux, but there is actually a good theory behind launching malicious attacks around Christmas time. Most sysadmins will be taking time off work, and the last lot of updates before Christmas will likely be postponed until the new year. The new sites catch up on all the exploits first week of January, and by the second week it's business as usual, more or less. Phosphorus have written an interesting article entitled Linux people should say, you're welcome Windows users. If it wasn't for Linux users setting the bar so high, would Windows users still be dealing with the blue screen of death several times a day? The author discusses how Microsoft had to really up their game in terms of stability and security, and that is evident in the improvement from Windows 95 to Windows 7. He likens the improvement American car makers have had to make to their vehicles due to the introduction of European and Japanese cars into the US. Interesting point because the British car industry failed to improve fast enough against the onslaught of European rivals. A brand new Rover was 10 years out of date compared to the latest Volkswagen equivalent, and now the company is over and gone. Hey, wait a minute, this is a tech video. Personally, I would have made the comparison against Internet Explorer and Firefox. In the early 2000s, Microsoft held a 99% monopoly on browser usage. They had crushed their main competitor, Netscape, and were so assured of their dominance that they disbanded most of the IE developer team. What Microsoft had neglected to realise was a small open source browser called Firefox was gaining traction, it was vastly superior to Internet Explorer 6, with features like tabbed browsing, and it could be heavily customised. Oh, and it was W3C standards compliant. By the time Microsoft responded with IE7, the damage had been done. Firefox and now Chrome have led to Microsoft having to pour resources into improving IE and making it W3C standards compliant. Microsoft are no longer the driving force behind the standards, but rather playing catch-up. I believe their new browser, Edge, is still fighting a losing war against Chrome. We can see the same with gaming on Windows. The competition from SteamOS has forced Microsoft to get on with developing DirectX in Windows 10, after it had been neglected in Windows 8. It's sad to see that Linux is still the underdog for gaming, despite Val's huge effort. I don't believe it has been wasted though, because it has sparked efforts by Nvidia to improve driver support in Linux. Or did Linus's quota, fuck Nvidia, do the job? There is some positive news for gaming in Linux, that Civilization 6 will be coming after users sent bribes of cookies and penguin plushes to Aspire Media who are handling the port. Besides daily inquiries asking for Sid Meier's Civilization 6, we've also received 12 dozen warm chocolate chip cookies, as well as squishy Linux penguin toys from the entire office. To say that we're excited to bring Sid Meier's Civilization 6 to Linux is an understatement, says Elizabeth Howard, Aspire Vice President for Publishing. We can see a picture of one gift from Linux Gaming subreddit. Although I have to say I'm still stuck in the era of retro gaming and haven't moved on from Civilization 2 and Alpha Centauri. The open source NoSQL database MongoDB has been taking a battering this past week, with some 27,000 out of 99,000 instances open to the internet having been compromised. It's another variant of ransomware where the entire database is deleted and then demands between 0.2 and 1 Bitcoin, 136 to 686 UK pounds, or 167 to 853 US dollars, to restore the data. There is no guarantee that the data can be restored, so the recommendation is not to pay the ransom. MongoDB maintainers have put out a blog showing users how to prevent attacks to their database using the built-in security features. The problem is MongoDB runs on TCP port 27017 and is very easy to identify. Leaving it open without proper precautions is sadly asking for trouble.
Now, this is not a vulnerability as such with Linux, but rather at the application level. And there is no issue here for the average home user of Linux. The vulnerability lies with web servers running poorly secured instances of MongoDB. Mercedes-Benz is the 10th car maker to join AGL, the Automotive Grade Linux Foundation, which is a project dedicated to creating open source software solutions for automotive applications, with much of the work going towards vehicle infotainment. It almost sounds like what Android does for mobiles, only more open source and targeted specifically at the automotive market. I don't believe any cars are available with AGL built in yet, but from what I have read, we won't see demo models until later this year, with the first cars being available for sale in 2018. The beta version of KDE 5.9 has been released. It comes with some nice new features, including the ability to drag and drop screenshot images directly into a web browser form or email composer without having to leave the application you're currently in. Global menus have returned. This brings back a feature reminiscent of Ubuntu Unity Desktop that was available in the latter end of KDE 4. The network configuration module now uses the Qt modeling language and brings us a nice new style. At some point in the 5.9 release, I believe that KDE Neon will be using Wayland by default. I can't really say I'm looking forward to that point unless it is finally going to work properly with proprietary NVIDIA drivers. There are also a few other features coming to KDE Plasma 5.9, and as always, I'll leave a link to all these stories in the video description. And that concludes the week of Linux news. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.